All right, so I whipped out the uh, Harbor Freight engine here. Have a whole bunch of go-kart parts. I'm gonna be working on the Yerf dog. I'm gonna be swapping out the uh, Tecumseh engine and installing this uh, Harbor Freight Greyhound engine. This video is pretty much going to be just uh, swapping out the engine. Uh, hopefully I can get it running today. Uh, the engine does run. It works on the, uh, the Harbor Freight engine. The only thing is I might run into some troubles with the throttle. But there should be enough parts just to sort everything out and actually get it going. But I don't know how long this is going to take. Because I have to remove the uh, box for the uh, torque converter. And it's just going to take some time. That and today's like a really cold and shitty day. There's not going to be any good days for a while. So there's going to be a lot. You might hear a lot of wind in my videos. Uh, especially recently. But that's because of the weather. That's not because of me. Um, so... If you guys, I know some of you guys might not like the sound of the wind, so I guess you can always put my videos on mute if the wind pisses you off, but uh, if you have no problem with the wind, you might just want to turn down your uh, volume a little bit, because I think today we're going to be running into some like 30 mile an hour winds and like 50 or 60 mile an hour gusts, so my apologies ahead of time for all the wind anyways I'm gonna get started on taking this uh, box apart here uh, for the torque converter and try to loosen up the engine see if we can get the swap in one video all right so on this uh, I guess you can call it a torque converter uh, shield for your transmission uh, shield here it's just a shield for your torque converter for your drive um, you can call it what you want, drive shield, whatever. Everybody's going to have a different name for this. Uh, this thing is supposed to have four bolts. It has two in the back here and two in the front, but there was one missing, so obviously somebody's torn this apart. So, before removing the engine, you've got to remove all this stuff. And gotta remove the uh, torque converter and the belt. And then you gotta loosen up the bolts on the torque converter plate to the engine. So there's the cover removed. Alright, so the next thing to do is uh, loosen up this clutch here or uh, torque converter and usually these are half inch it should come off fairly easy all you gotta do is hold down your uh, converter and just, uh, just turn it as so all of them pretty much the same way uh, if it's over tightened uh, you might want to have somebody help you do this. Be sure you always save all your bolts. Uh, you might want to store them in, a, in some kind of a container so you don't lose, uh, lose it. So anyways, this is you're just going to pull this out. That's all it is. I'm just pulling it out. Next, uh, we're going to pull off the belt. Just slide that. You got to be careful because there's a brass bushing. And the reason I know how to do this um, before I'm actually doing it, because I've done this many, plenty of times, many and plenty of times on other go karts. But you got to watch out. There's a brass uh, bushing here that's on the belt, so you kind of want to squeeze it and drag it out. Because if you pull it out, you'll pull out the whole bushing. You can see the bushing's moving, so you got to squeeze it a little bit pull it out and just take off your belt save that too 
So sometimes this is easy and sometimes it's not. Um, removing the back part of the converter. Uh, this one is going to come off easy. There's no, uh, there's slight rust, so I mean, there's nothing too bad on there. Uh, the one I have on the Harbor Freight engine is going to be a pain. I hope not. But anyways, uh, if you have problems with this, you'll want to uh, put some WD-40 or liquid wrench something to loosen it up. Uh, if it still doesn't loosen it up, because you don't want to bend this, you don't want to go from behind and put a a big old pry bar and you'll end up damaging it so the next best thing after that is getting a small little propane torch and actually heating up the shaft and if you have a good engine and you're just trying to replace the belt you might want to heat up the engine so the shaft will get heated up just with the uh, with the friction inside of the engine and the piston warming everything up and uh, so all you gotta do is heat it up a little bit but this one it's going to come out fine so just remove it by just pulling it out and also there's going to be on some models it depends how long the shaft is on the engine on this one it has the uh, spacer here on the back this is for the uh, this other pulley here this is what actually uh, aligns that spacer is uh, specific it aligns so the belt doesn't uh, go like offset um, you just pull that off make sure you save this bushing here you're gonna want to take off the uh, loosen at least the bolts for the uh, from the torque converter housing to the engine they shouldn't be on there extra like tight um, they should come off fairly easy if you're having trouble with this and he might want to warm up the engine uh, but if the engine's blown of course you can't so you might want to apply just a little bit of heat not too much make sure you save all these also you're going to be reusing these and I know I will because I don't have any on the other engine the air dogs are not all the same they kind of look the same but they're not all the same so this might be a little bit different from your Yerf dog if you're going to be working on it. Also, some of them will have the plate welded onto the uh, frame or it'll actually be connected to the jack shaft. If you can slide yours out just like that, then go for it. But if you can't, and this uh, pulley here with the, that's attached to the jack shaft is giving you problems, um, you just don't want to mess around with this pulley here because usually all this stuff gets uh, rusted out and it's hard to take it off and you can strip it and you have to apply a lot of force just to remove your uh, drive, what your drive pulleys um, so you just pull this off if you can and if you can't you're going to have to loosen up the mounts on the engine and just wiggle it out of there All right, so the weather just went from like all right to really, really crappy. Now it's snowing a lot more. Uh, I already started to loosen the mount on the throttle. Now that front uh, little bolt that you see there, it's stripped. So I'm actually gonna have to take off the mounting, the whole mounting that hooks up to the front uh, cover, to the pull starter cover. So I'm gonna have to take off the whole mounting and once I do that, um, I'm just going to take off the wires for the on and off switch. And all that's needed after that is just remove the engine bolts. Alright, so I've turned the go-kart on its side. Um, since this engine, I don't worry about it um, getting any oil into the cylinder or anything like that. I mean, it's garbage, so... I'm, I'm just going to tilt it to make it easier for me to remove this engine. I wouldn't be doing this with an actual working engine because you can get oil into your cylinder, to the top of your cylinder, and pretty much flood the top half of your engine. So I have already removed my 
throttle linkage and the on and off uh, switch. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be get, grabbing a, a half inch key and a half inch socket and I'm going to be removing the, the engine bolts, the mounting bolts on the bottom. Um, there's actually on this go-kart six of them but two of them are for the jack shaft which I won't be removing and the four that are spaced far apart are for the engine so I'm gonna be getting to do that now and I'm gonna loosen everything and I'll turn on the camera once everything's ready to come out alright so I've gone ahead and uh, loosened up the bolts on this engine now it's ready to just pull out of there Alright, so just as easy as that, the engine comes out. Now I'm ready to install the Harbor Freight engine. So I just got to remove the clutch off of that and that torque converter housing that I made for my other go kart. And just whip it onto this one, and maybe I'll be riding this in a while. Since these go-karts are pretty easy to work on, um, it's pretty much assemble as you disassembled. So I'm going to assemble the engine, the new engine now on it, just like I pretty much disassembled the other one. So now I'm going pretty much in reverse, so I'm going to be mounting the engine to the frame, tightening everything up, and then move on to installing the uh, torque converter uh, plate and then I'll be mounting the belt over the I'll put, I'll put the converter clutch back on there and then I'll be uh, installing the belt and then just re uh, install the shield or the uh, torque converter housing and just that's pretty much it it's just pretty much you know assemble as you disassemble but since I'm working with a whole different engine uh, the throttle is not going to be the same so I'm going to have to do some modifying to that and also same thing with the switch it's not the same so I got to do some modifying to that so I'll turn on the camera once I have all that um, I would show you putting in the new engine but I mean it's pretty much just like taking out the old one it's nothing special All right, so I threw in the Harbor Freight engine, and it looks good so far. And actually, looks way better than the old Tecumseh crappy engine that was on there. I'm not a Tecumseh fan. I know there's gonna be fanboys for Tecumseh, but I know I, I know Tecumseh. I've thrown so much of their engines away. I've kept a lot of their parts and melted them down. All the scrap aluminum. And I think I will be doing that with this. So if anybody out there has a uh, need for any Tecumseh parts, uh, contact me uh, through the comments or through the inbox would probably be the best. Uh, the engine is pretty much complete except for the exhaust and the air filter cover. But it's the... Uh, I think it's the OHH60... Uh, which will be an overhead valve uh, 6.0 engine. Uh, the pull starter, everything cranks over. The crank is good. Everything is good on it except uh, it just had some blow by. Uh, there seems to be some compression uh, for all I know. Or one of the rockers might have jumped and slipped off. and Maybe one of the valves ain't opening. I'm not sure. I'm not even going to mess with it. If there's anybody that has any uh, needs for parts, um, go ahead and contact me and we'll talk about it. Um, I mean, the head should be good. Uh, it had a carburetor issues. 
I'll tell you that much. But it cranks over, seems to have compression. It's just missing that extra compression. Um, I guess I could always open it up, but I don't want to mess with it. The, it has all like the on and off switch and all that stuff, so uh, there's no metallics in the oil either. So, but anyways, back to the uh, Yerf dog. Now I like that Harbor Freight engine on there. Um, now Harbor Freight carries the Predator engines, but pretty much the same thing, almost the same thing. And uh, I actually have to wash this engine up. I like how the exhaust just comes straight back. There's no um, issues there with the frame and the exhaust. There's no issues at all. Um, maybe bolting it down is going to be a little bit harder because I have there's less room now to actually get a key in there so I'm going to have to probably put a extension with a wobble adapter um, but so far so good I'm just waiting for this weather to calm down a little bit uh, the snow comes and goes alright so just when you think everything's going to fit perfectly it won't the uh, Harbor Freight shaft was about half an inch shorter than the Tecumseh so I had to make my own uh, custom stud uh, so I can fit and hold the uh, torque converter down so if you're doing a swap on one of these or any other go-kart you always want to make sure your torque converter is going to fit with the existing bolts from your existing engine um, if they don't you'll have to go out and purchase them at any uh, pretty much any um, home improvement store you can find all that stuff that you need but all I gotta do now is hook up the torque converter shield and do something with the throttle linkage see how I can set that up and she'll be ready to run all right it's getting dark and I just finished the go-kart it stayed pretty nice it runs good uh, I have to do some adjustments to it but I still have to put the shield on there but uh I like it I want to keep it I don't know I had plans of selling it but I want to keep it so um, the air, if the tires are still filled before right here, um, I gotta fill up the tire real quick and go for a ride. That's if it'll start because it's so cold. The video is shaky because I'm not using my tripod. So I gotta put some slime in this back tire. It's freaking cold. It actually snowed quite a bit. Then it melted. I was hoping it would stick so I can do some burnouts in the snow. Well, not burnouts, but donuts. <laughs> yep, the engine got cold on me. The steering is really uh, hard on it. 
stuff. The, I think I gotta grease the steering parts. This is gonna be so cold. So that's the ride on it. Um, sorry the film isn't all that great. It's kind of hard to get out, especially for me. But this thing has seat belts on it, but they're all shot to hell, so I gotta fix them. I'll put some car seat belt. I gotta just make some, some adjustments because when I uh, floor the gas, it kind of like makes a weird noise. I hope it's not the bearings. So I still have to also uh, wire the uh, kill switch, but at least it runs and runs pretty fast. Uh, only two of the tires won't hold air. But I can get maybe about half an hour to an hour of riding time on it. I think I'm just going to put some more slime and tear them up. And then I'll buy some new ones. But there's the new engine on it. I took out the tank and all the carb and I actually cleaned everything out. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice little toy. Uh, I might end up keeping it, I don't know. can't believe I got this for 30 bucks. Plus I had everything. Um, the only thing that was a pain in the ass that took maybe about two hours was the uh, cable for the gas. I actually had to route it. Uh, here on the side and I had to put springs and make my own linkage so 
I didn't make any video of that because it was snowing really bad and I didn't want my camera to get damaged. Um, also, there's probably like liability issues if somebody sees what I'm doing and they want to see, you know, they want to do the same thing I do and they get hurt or something. They're especially uh, younger kids. Uh, they might see this video and uh, always have an adult help you fix your stuff um, don't attempt to fix it all by yourself if you don't know what you're doing so I don't want like no uh, parents out there crying that they want to sue me because their kids saw something on YouTube and they hurt themselves but that's I guess the whole reason why I don't do a lot of DIY videos or how to videos that just show a lot of stuff but but anyways I love it it's pretty fun all I gotta do is just do some tweaking to it and she'll be all done I'll have some more video of me playing around with this but until next time I want to thank you guys as always for watching thank you